What's going on everyone? Mario here with AutoDS. In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything that you need to know about finding the best products to dropship using Google Trends. I'm going to Google this. Not only that, but I'm also going to give you a few extra tips and tricks that can help you spot different types of niches to help you gain a competitive edge on, well, the competition. Now, before we go ahead and continue with today's video, as always, we have an easy to reference cheat sheet with everything that I'm going to be covering today. Now, if you want access to that, just go ahead and comment down below the hashtag Google Trends and let me know what your takeaway is from this video. And once I see that you went ahead and did that, I'll reply back with a link to the sheet. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, what is Google Trends? Well, Google Trends is simply a very powerful tool that can show you what is currently trending or what has been trending in the past. Google Trends can really help you look for trends before they start, and it gives you a very, very good indicator. So check this out. Right now, we're at the Google Trends website, and the first thing that we need to do here is simply search up a niche or a product. We're going to do both. Now, the first thing we're going to look for is going to be a particular or a very specific product, and that's going to be a rose bear. Now, rose bears are very popular in a particular time of the year. We'll see one right now. Once we look up a search term, the first thing we need to do is switch over the past day, the time frame, from the past day to the past five years. Once we do that, then we're really going to start to see a clear indication of the different trends. So right off the bat, we can see that back in 2020, February was peak time and so was May. Then once again, February and May, again in 2022, February and May. And the trend just keeps going until 2024. Now, what happens in February? Well, Valentine's Day. Also, what about May? Well, in May, we have Mother's Day. So as you can see, these are actually the peak times for the Rose Bear product. Every other time throughout the rest of the year, there's a few searches here and there, but it's not peaking or it's not really even fluctuating like it does for January, February and May. Now, using this information, we can also see when we should start to stock our stores with this product. As you can see, the trend starts to rise right at the end of December, beginning of January. So that means that we want to have our store stocked up by November. November, we need to be doing all of the preparation or we need to be finished with our preparations and our product research. So that way we can be ready for this upcoming spike. Now you can search up specific products or you can also search up niches. So let's look up a niche that's pretty general and let's do swimsuits. Now, swimsuits are going to be peaking at another particular time of the year, which I've noticed as well, and that's going to be during summer. But the searches for this actually start in January. So it's a bit of a different trend than, let's say, the rose bears. But using Google Trends, we can see exactly when we need to start preparing. So taking a look at the graph, we can see that peak times seem to be around February, which is pretty interesting. And then in June, then once again in 2021, Around April is when it starts to spike, but it really peaks in June. Same thing goes for 2022. Between March to April, it has a nice little spike with the biggest one coming in June. You know what? March to April, that's spring break. That's another big reason why this starts to trend up and then really does spike in summer because that's when everyone starts to buy it. But looking in 2023, same thing. Spring break in March to April, spike in May to June. 2024, same exact thing. So again, this is a great way for us to prepare for upcoming trends in particular niches or for particular products. Now, in this case, we want to start preparing actually just around the same time that we start preparing for the rose bears in about November to December, because in January, it's when it starts picking up. And then once it gets to about June, July, we really don't have to start doing anything anymore. We can just start to focus on the next upcoming trend. All right, so we checked out swimwear. Let's think of something else. Let's think of another niche. So how about home goods? Home goods are an awesome niche to drop ship and that are a lot of times pretty high profit. Well, so this graph is a little bit crazier. Now, let's see what we can decipher from this. So for one, we can see that it is pretty much trending almost year round. There are a few spikes. So there are a few times throughout the year where it is going to be selling more than others, but it's fairly consistent throughout the year. So let's check this out. Let's see. Let's start off in 2021 at the very lowest spot. So right here. So May at the end of May, it was at its lowest, which is honestly not that not that bad. It has quite a few searches with a little spike in September to October. Now, why would that be a spike? Well, one reason for this could potentially be holidays. So October is Halloween. People like to decorate their house with different types of home goods for the seasons or for the fall season. 
then it dipped a little bit, keep going. And then in this little period over here, it's also down. So between March to April, there's still consistent searches for it, but it's not as much as let's say these peaks up here, which are in December, which kind of makes sense because people do often also gift different types of home goods. And then in January, it's kind of dipping with another pickup in July to August. So pretty much towards the end of summer. So in this case, let's see may it starts to rise to summer so in may you would probably want to start stocking up your store with different types of home goods in anticipation for the summer season same thing goes back here we can see that march to april to may it's all the way at the bottom and then in summer it picks up again so summer's one time where home goods is going to be selling better than the rest of the year of course like i said there's still interest throughout the rest of the year but in summer it, it seems to pick up a little bit more than the rest of the year now who's searching for this well, Connecticut right now, there's a lot of people in Connecticut searching for this, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. Interesting. Now, as far as the different types of related topics, we have Marshalls. So a lot of people are looking at the Marshalls store. So what does Marshalls sell? Marshalls sells a lot of home goods. Home goods is also another topic, which home goods is actually a division of Marshalls. It's the same store. Then we have Home Sense, Hobby Lobby, and Ross Dress for Less. So a lot of people here are looking for budget home goods. Why do I say this? Because Marshalls, Home Goods, I'm not sure about Home Sense, but Hobby Lobby and Ross, they're all discounted stores that sell things at pretty much a cheaper price. A lot of times they sell things from last season, but a lot of people are searching for these. A lot of people are not looking to pay top dollar. So looking at what they have at these different stores, maybe even going to the stores themselves, trying to see what they offer, what their price ranges are, that could also help you out as well. I know this adds into your product research and it adds a little bit more that you need to do. But if people are looking up these different types of stores, that means they don't mind paying whatever prices these companies are charging. So you can kind of start to mimic that as well. Now, as far as, let's say, products, we can check out the related queries. In the related queries, we can see that people are looking up home goods, ghost blankets. I have no idea what a ghost blanket is. Let's find out. Oh, I guess an actual ghost bl blanket. That seems to be what it is. A blanket just with little ghosts on it. Then we also have a pink ghost blanket, home goods reopening date. That's not relevant. Reopening, reopen. That's not relevant either. But we can see that people are searching up for ghost blankets. I guess right now people are trying to stock up on some for Halloween, maybe. Don't go chasing ghosts. It's interesting the types of things that you get to learn using these types of resources. It really starts to make you think like, do I really know what I'm doing? <laughs> Why are people searching up these things right now? It's, it's really cool. It's really interesting to see what people search, how trends start to rise and how you can catch a trend before it actually starts. All right, so what if we search up a season? Well, I looked up winter and it just gives me a lot of just generic stuff about winter, but I looked up winter products and check this out. Now, under winter products, we can see that the spike is right at the top of December, comes back down to March, all the way to August, and then spikes again in December. Same thing pretty much goes for the rest of the years, all the way up January. Actually, this time it spikes up between January to February, which is interesting. And then it drops down, starts picking up around June, August, spikes at once again, November, December-ish, and then goes down. And same thing for 2023. So that's actually pretty interesting. It's a little bit different than what we saw earlier because people are actually looking up winter products. Now, as far as the subregions, we can go ahead and skip that. This is what I wanna see, the topics and the queries. Can this help us? Can we find different types of dropshipping products that we're gonna be able to offer and make some money? So related topics, nothing here really helps us. Found, necessary, finished, important, succeeding, nothing. But check out the queries. So the Winter Paralympics, again, that's not something that's really relevant to us. Neither is the ordinary or the Winter Olympics or the winter season. But this right here, check this out. High quality products in winter can be heated up, warm, underwear, shorts, three-stage adjustable temperature control. What? Are people actually searching for this? Well, yeah, it looks like people are because there is a breakout on this. So let's check out what this is. Let's do underwear, shorts, three-stage adjustable temperature control. And... Would you look at that? They have heated underwear. That, that stairs all I got to say right now. I'm, I'm dumbfounded. That's insane. So we can see that there's actually quite a few different ones here. They got one at Amazon. They have one in madeinchina.com. I'm sure we can backtrack this. Look at this. Women's heated pants. Warm heating pants for women. Eight piece heating pads. They even have a power button and everything. That is insane. You see, if it wasn't for Google Trends, I would have never found this. And then they have here in Made in China, the same underwears, which is pretty much the same thing. This is crazy. So how are we going to find this? How are we going to find this in one of the actual suppliers that we use? Well, let's go ahead and right click it, search images with Google and select the image. 
if that doesn't work we can go check out that one right there but 128 dollars on amazon you can find it at 76 dollars at walmart so maybe you could drop ship it from walmart to amazon keep scrolling oh look at that we found it at the h gate this one's pants but you know same concept i guess but yeah here it is we found it we found the product and i'm gonna add this to my store before winter comes this is pretty interesting all right i think we potentially found a winning product now what about suppliers can we search up suppliers on google trends yeah you can search up suppliers but the data that it's going to give you is not going to be very relevant to you know actually finding different suppliers but you can still kind of use it so check this out right now i searched up alibaba and we can see that the interest over time over the last five years it's pretty consistent there's a lot of search for it but this really isn't something that's going to help us people that are looking for alibaba on google trends aren't typically people that are looking to buy certain products a lot of the times it's people that are either looking for a cheaper option or drop shippers so that data is not necessarily going to help us but if we scroll down this potentially could so we have our different topics and our queries right we can see that people that searched up alibaba are also searching up timu they're searching up aliexpress they're searching up the stock exchange of hong kong apparently and the neo stock which again these are not going to be relevant to us but these two kind of are now same goes here different queries people are searching up timu and a few other stocks the stocks don't have anything to do with us but timu and aliexpress do so how can this help us well we already know about aliexpress and we already know about timu but being able to search for certain suppliers can give us other suppliers that are related to them or are similar to them sometimes we're going to find stuff that we know like here we have timu which we don't really source from timu but we do source from aliexpress so you can see that it does give you some extra suggestions so what about dhgate let's see actually dhgate has been trending lately that's interesting people that search up dhgate also search up dior it's not really going to help us tote handbags that can help us because a lot of people are actually buying tote handbags right now my wife just bought a tote handbag from amazon and that's like her fifth one a lot of people at her job are also buying these totes and apparently it's something that's trending so this right here is very helpful tote handbags that could be something that we could start looking into maybe even through print on demand using AutoDS's print on demand aside from that we then have timu panda buy that's interesting i haven't heard of panda buy yet best dh gate dupes so duplicates and then airpods and essentials hoodies so hoodies that's another one essentials i think is a brand but hoodies we can also sell that's also something that seems to be trending and people are going to be looking for so when it comes to suppliers you can search for them but just remember that the interest over time isn't something that's very going to be too relevant for us but the related topics and the related queries are that's something that we really can use to our advantage in this case google trends is a very powerful tool and a very powerful resource that you have at your disposal for completely free and the best thing about it is that you can really use it to your advantage to anticipate upcoming trends just like i did with the swimwear so let's say you have maybe toys you can search up a particular type of toy maybe board games or something like that and see when the spikes are for that so that way you can anticipate that spike you can anticipate those trends so you can be ready two or three months prior why do i say get ready two to three months prior because you need to do more product research yeah you already found this topic that's trending and it's about to blow up but what products in that niche are actually going to be trending so you do need to put a little bit of time into your product research that's why i typically say give it between two to three months before a trend starts to start stocking up your store with whatever you anticipate that trend to be now you know where else you can find trending products without as much research that you need to do you still need to do research you still need to do research but it's a little bit easier and that is at the handpicked products section over at autods.com. All of these different products here are handpicked by professional dropshippers. This is really cool. And are consistently updated. So whatever you see here today, next month, you'll still see it if you keep scrolling, but you're going to have newer products on top of this. Newer products that are going to be relevant to the upcoming seasons, to the upcoming times. Now, not only that, you also get tons of other information. So let's check this out really fast. Let's go with this one right here, Kids LED Projector. This is actually really cool because right now, people are going to be looking for stuff that's back to school. In which case, we're going to be offering something like this. But right now is the time to start stocking up our stores because we're a few months out. So let's check this one out really fast. So here you're going to have a bunch of extra information that you can use to your advantage. For one, you have your engagement score and you have your saturation score. Saturation score simply tells you how saturated the market is with this product. In this case, there is a little bit of saturation. It's kind of busy, but it's not full market. So this is really good. This means that we have a chance to be able to jump in there before it's completely oversaturated and actually start making a few sales. We're going to be able to add this to our store right now in anticipation for the trend coming up in 
two or three months when school starts again. So we're going to be in this before it goes full market. Now, as far as the engagement score, this simply tells you how much engagement this product has on social media. So all of the different likes, all of the different comments, all of the different videos are all combined together to this one score. And in this case, you can see that it's pretty moderate. So there are a lot of people talking about this on social media. There's a lot of engagement around it. Now, whether this is on active or inactive, it doesn't really matter because honestly, at the end of the day, if it's inactive, that means there's not a lot of hype around it. So you can create that hype. Now, if it is active, that means, yeah, there's a lot of people posting about it. Your video could potentially get lost in the sauce. It can get lost in the sea of endless videos. But if you stand out, if you make a unique video and you don't make those very generic videos with just, you know, basic background music and just showing the little product. If you actually go deep into it, talk about it, show its features, you have the potential to actually break out. Aside from that, if you're running ads, so let's say you're running Facebook ads or TikTok ads, you can use this target audience right here. So we have the different types of interests for people you want to target. So in this case, somebody that is interested in interactive learning, drawing, creativity, and educational toys. On top of that, also parents. That's pretty much who you want to target. People also between the ages of 18 and 45 that are males and females. doesn't matter if they're married, single, or in a relationship. So all of this is information that you can use to your advantage to make sure you target the right people. Now, as far as your creatives, I know TikTok is the number one place right now to get on there and just do completely organic marketing. And it gives you the chance to blow up. It gives you the chance to go viral. But if you don't know about that, if you don't know how to create your structures, if you don't know how to create your videos, or even if you're not really sure what would look good, then you can check out the social ads section here. We have the Facebook ads and we have the TikTok ads. So you can watch each one of these and you can get inspiration for your own videos. Obviously, you don't always have to make your own videos. You can outsource your videos. You can go on Fiverr. You can hit up a different type of company that makes UGC ads. But if you want to go the cheap route, which honestly, in my case, has always been the best way to go about it, make your own content. It, it really does work. Also, the last thing I want to show you is if you're selling this on your own website. So if you're not selling on Etsy or if you're not selling on eBay, if you have your own Shopify website, you can check out these different websites over here. These are all competitors that are selling the exact same product. You can use this to compare prices. You can use it to compare the actual website, check out the different structures on the website, the different pricing. And you can see that all the websites are kind of similar, but they all have their own unique little twist to it. So you can use all of this as inspiration to be able to come up with your own website, along with comparing prices and shipping and everything as well. So. If you want access to the cheat sheet, remember you can go ahead and comment down below the hashtag Google Trends and let me know what your takeaway was from this video. Also, let me know what you think of Google Trends. Have you used it? Do you use it on a daily basis? Is it something that you're just finding out about? What do you think of Google Trends? I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Let me know down in the comments below. Huge thank you to everyone for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Really means a lot. If you did make it this far, make sure you smash that like button because you obviously liked the video, you found it informative, Hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Once again, huge thank you to everyone for watching. My name is Mario with AutoDS. Wishing you all nothing but success in your dropshipping business. And I'll catch you all next time.